Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to the famous Toba volcano, specifically the biggest volcanic eruption in the last 2 million years. The volcanic eruption that happened approximately 74,000 years ago and the remnant of which is still located right here in Indonesia. But we're also going to be discussing what effects this might have had on the planet and how this unusual eruption might have influenced the evolution of our species. And all of this is going to be based on this relatively recent paper that you can find in the description below. And let's start with the eruption itself. So roughly around 74,000 years ago, a tremendously large volcanic eruption, officially known as the Toba Supervolcano Eruption, ended up releasing approximately 3,000 cubic meters of magma, roughly around 3,000 times more than Mount St. Helens eruption back in 1980, or approximately 150 times more than the Krokatoa volcano back in 1883, which also ended up creating this beautiful lake you see right here, today known as the Lake Toba, the largest volcanic lake in the world. The lake itself is approximately 100 kilometers long, 30 kilometers wide, and about 500 meters deep, which is most likely the size of the cone of that supervolcano. So this was a huge eruption. And today it's believed that there was a dramatic shift of climate following this very powerful eruption. For approximately 10 to maybe 15 years, the entire planet entered what's known as the volcanic winter, with temperatures in some regions falling by about 15 degrees Celsius. But 74,000 years ago was also the time when there were a lot of different hominid species on the planet. The Neanderthals, the Denisovans, and of course us, Homo sapiens, humans. And so it's always been a puzzling question what effects this had on the entire population on the planet. And also did this eruption in any way influence the evolution of various hominid species on the planet? Well, the answers to many of these questions seem to be yes. But let's take this one step at a time. Starting with this idea or this hypothesis proposed many years ago, known as the genetic bottleneck. The idea suggests that approximately 50 to 100,000 years ago, something might have happened to the human species, decreasing the total population to about 3,000 to maybe 10,000 individuals in total. This was actually based on a lot of early genetic studies. And this was something that was discovered independent of any other discovery. This is further supported by other genetic studies that suggest humans descended from maybe 1,000 to 10,000 different pairs. Pairs of ancient humans that existed approximately 70,000 years ago. And this was actually discovered before the Toba supervolcano theory. And both of these ideas together merged, creating what's known as the Toba catastrophe theory. The idea that approximately 70,000 years ago, a catastrophic eruption of the volcano resulted in an almost extinction of the human species. Which of course created the genetic bottleneck and of course would explain why so few humans were responsible for the entire species afterwards. But this idea was not without problems. For example, early human or possibly Neanderthal tools discovered in India approximately 70,000 years ago seem to suggest that those particular populations did not really disappear or were affected by whatever was happening. Something similar was also discovered in certain regions in Africa. At the same time, the analysis from Southeast Asia suggested quite the opposite. Everything in the region was almost completely gone, including all of the forests and including all of the vegetation. At the same time, similar genetic bottlenecks seem to exist in a lot of other species on the planet, all pointing at the same event approximately 70,000 years ago. At the same time, if we were to look at various studies studying human migration across the last 100,000 years or so, we know that approximately 200 to 100,000 years ago, the human population spread across most of Africa. But it wasn't until approximately 70,000 years ago when our ancestors finally decided to leave Africa and to move into other regions. Today this is sometimes referred to as the out of Africa theory or the recent African origin of modern humans. And though possibly a coincidence, the dates do seem to align. The biggest volcanic eruption of the last few million years seems to coincide with the time humans left Africa and didn't just leave Africa, but eventually spread to every continent on the planet. But around this time, a lot of other species, including Denisovans and Neanderthals, started to vanish, even though prior to this they were actually dominating those specific areas. So, for example, our cousins, the Neanderthals, were more or less dominating Europe for hundreds of thousands of years. Yet approximately 70,000 years ago, they started to slowly disappear, eventually vanishing completely with humans eventually replacing them. 
And something similar happened to our cousins Denisovans that were mostly inhabiting most of the Southeast Asia. Although interestingly enough, one of the most recent discoveries in regards to Denisovans that you can read more about in this article in the description below is a really interesting discovery of an ethnic group living in the Philippines known as the Aita Magbogon, who apparently have the highest percentage of Denisovan DNA in their genes. Approximately 5% of their DNA is from Denisovans. But because there are so few fossils of Denisovans and because we know so little about them, it's still very difficult to explain what exactly happened to them. Nevertheless, by combining all of these individual pieces of evidence, we can kind of start seeing a picture here. The picture being that it could have been because of the eruption of Tobo supervolcano. With more evidence coming from this paper right here, sort of explaining even more what might have happened and why humans prevailed while everyone else perished. And what the scientists here did was analyze 42 different global climate model simulations, looking at various climatic effects by changing the amount of sulfur injected into the atmosphere. With sulfur, of course, being responsible for most of the climatic changes, for the cooling effect of the planet. And one of the major discoveries coming out of these climate simulations is the very significant regional variation suggesting that certain regions on the planet were more lucky than others. They were actually spared from this extremely harsh winter. And in their model, certain northern regions, specifically Europe and East Asia, would cool down by about 10 degrees Celsius for many years, where some of the southern regions, specifically the regions of Africa where early humans were quite prevalent, would very likely not go through these dramatic climatic changes. Here the temperature might drop by about 4 degrees maximum. And so even at the highest sulfur emissions in their models, the regions where early humans were quite prevalent would not experience as much cooling or as much loss of precipitation compared to the regions where you would find mostly Neanderthals or Denisovans. And so this paper sort of suggests that humans seem to have got lucky. And so the paper in this case does suggest that Tobo supervolcano may have played an extremely important role in allowing our species to dominate the planet, while at the same time preventing other hominid species like Denisovans or Neanderthals from ever becoming populous enough to be any threat to humans. And although our cousins did not disappear right away after the eruption, their numbers most likely never recovered, with humans eventually replacing all of them. And of course interbreeding in the process, which is why a lot of us still have both Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA in our genes. At the same time, the study definitely presents enough evidence to suggest that different parts of the world were affected differently, and humans got super lucky and got sheltered from most of these effects, with the regions in India and in Africa being the most sheltered, whereas Europe, Asia and North America received most of the effects and suffered the most. And these simulations also sort of help us realize that any future volcanic eruptions that might influence the planet potentially will have similar effects. Certain continents will be dramatically affected, but certain others will be most likely spared. Although predicting all of this would be extremely difficult. Nevertheless, a really interesting proposition and definitely a theory that sort of makes sense. And so just to summarize, a supervolcano that erupted in Indonesia 74,000 years ago might have caused such a dramatic shift in climate that it caused the winter for at least 10 to maybe 15 years. But this did not affect all of the regions equally. Certain regions like Africa and India were not as affected, whereas certain other regions were affected a lot more. And it just so happens that this is also the time when humans officially left Africa and started to slowly spread across the world. All of which sort of suggests that it was probably because of this volcanic eruption. It helped humans to eventually dominate the planet. So definitely a very interesting proposition and an extremely interesting study. But I guess for now that's sort of all we know. Once we learn more about our cousins, or once we learn more about the evolution of human species, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, Check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.